Flat Earth British, Martin Lietke speaking. Welcome people, welcome to my channel. On the 11th of October 2019. Okay, I'm here today with an important Martin message. An important Martin message and cool post to balance things, as you'll see. Okay, now, <laughs> welcome everybody anyway. Thank you for, for joining. Please subscribe to my channel come back and have a really juicy time in the future <laughs> and make sure to share and uh, spread the word and like if you do what I'm about to show you okay cool now I'd message this morning okay in my emails from my publisher for my upcoming book or our upcoming book okay flat earth the holy grail and it was not a good message. No. K Beauty, who's my publisher, okay, was a bit apprehensive to tell me the news of something that happened two days back because she thought my head might be already a bit wrecked and she didn't want to add to it being kind. Okay, get a lot of that. Okay. So <laughs> the news is that she got hacked. A computer got hacked. Okay, some sticky, nasty, virile thing. They just wrecked a computer and addled her hard drive. Included on that hard drive was my book. Now, all is not lost. She've had a friend there for two days trying to put things back together. Okay, virtually sticky tape things back together. But it's a painful process. A bit like, you know, <laughs> rebuilding the space program. It's a painful process. It's a bit like me re-uploading re to YouTube. So a bit, re bit of reversing again. I had the book in PDF forms, everything that is, you know, my book's there. But it's like her end, okay? We have to start, you know, transferring again, okay? So this will put the book back to mid-November. I do apologise, but, you know, I'm just getting this, like, I'm probably just paranoid. There's videos out there saying I am, so it must be. But, mate, I'm just getting a sneaky feeling guys that they don't want this book out maybe I'm just paranoid I don't know you know three channels hacked in the last month mm. and now my publisher hacked mm. it's not the first time I've heard of people having connection with me having their computers addled either this has been going on for years <laughs> really so yeah we've got problems okay problem is in camp okay my publisher's computer has been hacked That shit. <laughs> but so to balance, okay, to balance, we got some mud flood. Got some cool as fuck mud flood, actually. The we don't think mud flood's going down, crew, will probably have to reevaluate after reading this article that was passed to me. I think in my comments, but whoever passed to me, Universal Shot, or Love You, or whatever, I can't remember names in my head. Terrible for names. Good for faces. Terrible for names. <laughs> and you, you look like that. I go through all the names before I get to the right one. Oh, are you Chris, Steve, Matt, Phil? No, it's Peter. That's it. Nice one. I got you first time. So that's me. <coughs> anyway. So this is a really, really cool, bloody article, guys. Loving this one. Loving this one. Now... If you look at this from a mud flood perspective, we know all the answers to the questions that they are just going to ask. It's a really cool article, okay? It's a bit like, it's a bit Pompeii like, the unexpected Betty Box of Melbourne. Now, after this, we'll look at some nice colour shots of the late 1800s in Melbourne, scratch our heads and wonder how any of this has even happened, okay? So check that out for one glorious shot. Whatever is that picket fence doing under that metre of mud? What happened? Anyway, men pose in front of a picket fence unearthed in the 1920s during excavation for the Capitol Theatre on Swanson Street. Now, I bet that was a beautiful structure. Okay. What must they have wondered nearly a century ago when a metre down in the Melbourne clay their shovels hit a picket fence? Its planks still hard and neatly rowed. At the base emerged a wooden track and nearby the stump of a long ago chimney. 
There is no explanation for the workers. <laughs> we got one. We got one. Digging foundations for what was the Swanson Street's famed Capitol Theatre. As the building they had just demolished had stood since 1865. Yeah, don't they all? Melbourne, as a European settlement, had only existed 30 years before that. We don't think Mother's going down, crew. So, this was underneath the theatre. Okay. The discovery of rem was remarkable enough for Jim Whelan, the man responsible for the theatre's dig, to souvenir the fence for his own backyard, for his to two anonymous, well heeled Melbourne gents to pose for the picture. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Anyway. We know these details through the historian of the writer Robin Neer, who devotes them in the paragraph of a book from 2014, The City Lost and Found. Okay, isn't that interesting? Um, the little, uh, but little else has ever been said or explored, even as the other Pompeii Eskew finds, I think that means similar, uh, far too deep for such a young city. We have an answer accumulates across Melbourne's CBD <laughs> in more recent decades. Archaeologists were no more confounded than in 2017 when they unearthed a preserved neighbourhood block the size of four tennis courts, metres below the ground in Longsdale Street, Willsley Church. They found an entire housing estate below the city. <laughs> Check it out. Love this building. Love it. Wow. So cool. So cool. So the foundations of the school exposed under the means of Wesley Wesley Church. So Wesleyan Church. No, he came from Cardiff. We have West, one of the first Wesleyan churches on earth, yeah. So God, I gotta go up now. Rain is so bad. I've got to go and do work in here apparently. Someone remembered the photo in Aeneas' book, and an archaeologist tossed around theme leaves, namely that they were digging into basements. But how then can we explain the evidence of gardens, windows, fireplaces, and picket fences during Wheeler's works long ago? Catching. <laughs> love this, love this. The Heritage Council of Victoria commissioned a study to answer the questions. Well, I bet they come up with some shit. Anyway, what, was, what did they say? The report has now been delivered and it wasn't what we expected mr smith says it's going to have implications for for the way we do archaeology in the next 50 years the alliance archaeological study heritage ruins investigation to melbourne's berry blocks revealed details of a forgotten campaign through 1850 to 1860s by the melbourne then council to rise the levels of swampy melbourne to putrid streets Check this out, guys. You know that city I'm going to show you shortly, okay? They're saying that it's got built at that time in this. Now, there's horses drowning in this mud, okay, guys? And as with Chicago, and as with Kansas City, okay, and Seattle, they say that they lift them out of the mud, entire cities, guys. Think that sounds reasonable? With jacks, loads of men in mud, moving entire blocks. Hills were flattened, lower area, uh, lower laying areas filled. Uh, the reason for today's milder up and down cross town walks, so mud floods. However, the bombshell of the study was that they discovered the law passed in 1853 requiring those low lying areas to bury their homes. If a landowner refuses or was too slow, the council was empowered to rise the level of the land itself and charge the costs. Does that sound reasonable, guys? The researchers put through old council records, newspaper articles, existing archaeological reports to find reference to at least 30 sites, uh, many of which uh, would still be frozen in time under Melbourne's CVD. I love the name of that area. It's got a real swing to it. So, love it, love it. so yeah, this entire area there. Okay. And you can get it on the photographs here. And I'll tell you some of the structures. 
Very, very, very cool. And uh, different tenements, etc. But I love that photograph. It's one of my favourite Mudflood photographs. Whatever that is. Anyway, there's the Capitol Theatre and there's that lovely Wesleyan Chapel. Okay. Surprisingly, many early residents were devastated. They plead with the council for mercy. Okay. Others rebuilt their homes above the new level. Melburniums scavenged rubbish and battered off uh, road offcuts to Usersville, which became a precious commodity. This is like sounding replicated across the plain, this is. This is a similar thing I've seen in Chicago as well. All that wood. Stone. To understand why people had to bury their homes, it's important to appreciate the landscape and squalor of early Melbourne. This is interesting. The report includes vivid first-hand descriptions of such landmarks as Longsdale Swamp at the eastern end of Longsdale Street, which brewed up vegetation, rubbish and offal from slaughter, pigs and sheep. Early Melbourne hills and water flows. So this is the topography of where the mud went. Check this out. They're telling you it is. They tell you again now in a minute. This is mud. The writer who documented early Melbourne, Edward Finn, Venetian, um, said similarly, uh, Flinders Street was a swamp. Same as Cardiff, same as London, same as many, many cities, same as St. Petersburg, same as Washington. Hmm. This is no coincidence why they would build such giant cities on swamps. Or is it possible that they weren't swamps and they were actually inundated and mud flooded by events, which we'll talk about in this vlog. And describe Swanson and Elizabeth streets as swallow gullies with deep and dangerous cuts. Even Collins Street was so slushy and sticky that it required to be equipped with a pair of leggings or long mud boots. I love them. Mud boots. <laughs> Disease thrived in the low-lying areas and humble classes and made their lives. So anyway, so the people care not for drainage and cleanliness. They are full of meat, bread, brandy and water. That's not like by design at all. So, quite amazing. they got different um, sort of versions of what happened, like drowning, like literally horses, it's that deep. Right, Worshipful Sir, I have the honour to complain to your Worship for the nuisance near my residence in Dudley Street West. A large water hole or pond right in front way, uh, of the way leading off to the above mentioned street, endangering the lives of passerby. A child was almost only a few days old ago, a few days ago, taken out of it by a person passing by at the time and it would have been inevitably drowned. So it's so deep that your kid could drown in it. <laughs> every, <laughs> on every corner, one meets with strange, something offensive, excuse me. One cannot pass a butcher shop with being out half poisoned. This is so rank. The whole city reeks of unsavory odors. It's a Phoenician city. Hmm. Anyway. Population increased in the city and began the transformation into the marvellous Melbourne of the 1880s, which we'll look at now. After this, the answer, according to the council, was the holes. Excuse me, was to fill in the holes and fill them fast. Okay. Sometimes uh, I love that mud boots. It's just ringing in my head. Sometimes they didn't have time to look under the floorboards to clear out those things in the corner or even empty the cesspit. So it's really unusual, isn't it? It's like almost as if it come in in a hurry. They didn't even, <laughs> they just leave it and they go. Holy fuck. They never planned to fill the sites in and they didn't have a lot of time to do it. The hardship of forebearers contemporary Melburnians, uh, not to mention the army um, excited archeologists sealed insight into the early years of their city. Yeah, there's going to be a big fucking cover up here. Look at this red brick. 
red brick chimneys both sides fireplaces as well is it yeah oh, it's Pip Pompeii like minus sense and uh, says Meg Gould in archaeologist member of Victoria Heritage and the early deposits are really exciting because they tell us a lot about early Melbourne development and historical record they give uh, yeah they're scratching their heads and got a fun clue what's going on okay old digs uh, which may not have made any sense at the time can be um, reinterpreted and re-examined archaeologists now have a date stamp to okay where on anything below the level the line of the film can reliably be associated with pre-1860s pre-1860s eh it's a nice red brick fireplace I wonder what the outside cover in it is all plaster on it would it look like ornate beautiful Tatarian yeah. wow 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 they can't explain any of this <laughs> oh, oh, it's the gold rush. It's the gold rush. This is a Eureka stockade. This is at the height of the gold rush. This Melbourne's population grew into a massive exponential factor, says Mr. Smith. Okay, whatever. So, they do talk about drowning horses. Um, I think this all connection between what is going on now and the construction of the Metro Tunnel. Uh, which is nearly hasn't gone through since this moment of 1850s and 1860s. Oh shit. That makes things a bit weird. So this is a mystery, but I think we might know the answer to this one as well. Which is pretty, if you know Bob Medford. So it's a mystery of the buried bullock dray. So an entire cart and horse buried. The mud is that deep. Uh, the remains of a bullock team and a cart um, mouldering beneath the tarmac and tram lines of one of Melbourne's busy, busiest intersections. Okay, says again um, Robin Ania in this cool book, apparently. Um, in 1868, uh, we remember an occasion of a, dry, a dray of bullocks which also haplessly embedded in a hole in Elizabeth Street. The animals were allowed to stifle in the mud and being as nobody, uh, nobody's duty to remove the nuisance, they remain there to this day, lie buried in the mud in a contemporary graveyard of the present day. <laughs> so apparently this is like your kid's gonna drown in the mud, your horse and cat are gonna disappear in the mud, they ain't gonna get out, okay? bogged down in a mere mud so going on what I just said do you think Melbourne may have had a mud flood I'm just saying just saying okay here's Melbourne in the 1880s it's got like on top of these which are um, nice nicely made poles they don't seem to be having wires but the photographs have been altered but there's the Taria okay and Johnson Street and they got strange like sort of antiquity things on top of here What's that? Machinery and engines. Got the tram. So yeah, all got lifted up apparently. So they had a great exposition as well. They always do. And what seemed to be free energy things in Melbourne. And use more in Melbourne. But they got the mud and the duck boards down there. They haven't managed to lay a road. They got the tram. They got the tram. They got massive Tataria. Looks like Cardiff. Looks like anywhere really and then um, Phoenician bossy boots centre right at the end of this big long street of mud and uh, what well, looks like boards and boards they haven't got pavements at this period but they've managed to build these entire structures in mud where the horse and dray will disappear in I wonder what this is so I hope you Australians are enjoying this hope you're enjoying this as all I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, brother. Good reason to. So there's another one. Black and white. Maybe get a better shot. There don't seem to be any wires, do there, coming across this picture? But look, huge doors, huge windows, beautiful masonry. All this took on horse, horse and cart, this giant, massive, hotel y looking thing. With massive doors, 
tiny little peep. All right. Is um and duckboards wood wood, and it took her all there in mud that disappears. What are these strange things? Antiquity, uh, free energy things with no wires. Cause it's all free energy at this period. Antiquatech. 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 It's beautiful, isn't it? Look at the size of that one there. Oof. Yeah, you need a giant dome image over your door. Just in case you hit your top hat off. You wouldn't want that. So there's a wire there. See that wire? See that wire? What are these? What are these? So, look at this. So has managed to green over and get all like pastely looking but I guess they added that it's beautiful isn't it love that photo there you are Melbourne nice little uh, brackets for these electric lights yeah it's not gas is it nobody's coming along and lighting them candles up are they and these look at this it's like literally glowing Maybe they had it. Maybe the artist wanted you to notice here. And why is there a bank on every corner, everywhere in the world that looks exactly the same? This could be any British city. This could be any American city. Your banks all look the same, Phoenicians. You know, fuck it. Oh, see? Shell. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, what's that, guys? What's that? There's no wires coming off here. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely tipping down. I'm supposed to go out. I know I said that. Moaning to myself. So, no wires. No wires. Strange ass looking antiquity sort of energy transference poles. What are them? Chimneys. Steam powered. Can't have all that underground and everything in situ and all these Tatarian structures in the buildings. Only, you know, they rose these guys. They had jacks and they made all these buildings rise up out of them. They built it all when your horse, at the same time as your horse is going to drown in the mud. Still, it's nice, isn't it? Pretty, pretty. Pretty. No wires off that. You can see the wires off that one. So that's a telegraph. And these are your free energy. Probably driving that tram. What's driving that tram? Electric motors. Melbourne had the most incredible, biggest tram, tram network in the world at that stage. The station is an unbelievable, tiny building. Built on a Stafford. So they say. Well, Stafford's still there, actually. So this could be anywhere. And these. Any wires? Not really. Check that out. Little ceramic. There, all the way up. No wires. Free energy. The Tataria. Melbourne. Tataria. <sighs> yeah, I know. So. This is obviously not a gas light, is it? It's just fucking light bulb, so... And check that out. Is that the railway station? Might be, you know, where that, like, pretending terrorist attack happened. And look, they didn't have time to build a clock. Or was it really there in the beginning? It's Black Deppler. Crazy. And there's another one of them there. No wires. That's the telegraph on these crappy little poles. Okay, and that's Flinders Street that was just mentioned in that article, as was this. So this was like the muddiest place of it all. Look at the size of that! Wow! And they want you to notice these are right, don't they, in this highlighting. These are telegraph, these are... Free energy. Okay. Oh, I love these red uh, brick gates. And these could be anywhere in Britain now. Huh? Look at the size of these. Cool, you want to be careful your horse and cat don't fucking get buried in the mud. Thank you, Azad. I just forgot to turn my Facebook off. One love, Azad. Thank you for the juice you send me. And oh, look at the decoration on this free energy electric light lamp post. <clears throat> Do you ever have the feeling? That you may have been robbed. What about that? That's nice, the Melbourne Hospital, isn't it? I bet that was a mental institution before that, God knows what. Wonder what runs that trap. Wonder what this does. There's no wires off here. Eh? Maybe they just washed them out. Some wires there running through there, though. On the top ones there, maybe. 
we got some iron. Look at that, could be growth. So, only horse and cats. You got the cobble down by here, it looks like. I wonder all that building is. A little Phoenician thing. Oh, very nice. Melbourne's a beautiful city. And the King's Theatre. Hmm. Nice. Got some wires there. Nothing up here, though. Only on the one side of the street. Okay. Oh, look at that. No wires. Yeah, these are lovely. But they are altered, obviously, because of that colour added to them. But they really want you to emphasise these strange ass non telegraph poles with the antiquity things and all the roofs, man. Check that out. <gasps> when they built that. <laughs> 1830, the entire city's there. This is like 1880s. <coughs> 1890s, excuse me. And bump. There's an old Anglican church smack in the middle. Like from the apparent Middle Ages when it was all there, as was this. Look at this. But all the other levels are below that ground. THC. So we got CBD and THC. I think I might move to uh... a... <laughs> I think I might move to uh, Melbourne. Anyway, more juice. It's a bit past me. I can't go through it all. Because i got to get going. I'm training. And I'm supposed to be somewhere. So, um... Unusual Natural Phenomena book. Okay, guys. I'll tell you what I got in it. It's craziest stuff actually ever and I'm going to link it to you so you'll be able to go through it for yourself it's from 1977 I think this one and we'll have a little look ok so come on scroll through so please share this out if, if you're there if anyone's there I'm not just bloke talking to himself in his bedroom went <coughs> 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 down the wrong way This one, this motherfucker doesn't seem to want to load, does it? Excuse my language. Ah, there you are. Maybe. Maybe because his black page is by there, isn't it? Anyway, basically, it tells you of angels' um, dust. Whatever that is, angels' wings. I'll tell you now. So, luminous phenomena, that's remarkable aurora phenomena. Phenomena. Coincident with auroras, sky glows, sky brightenings, weather lights, electrical discharge phenomena, ball lightning, unusual forms of lightning, mm -hmm. uh, vagreras and odd effects of lightning, don't know what that is, Me meteor like phenomena, meteor like, so not meteors, comet. Some reported strange effects of meteors, like not doing what they're supposed to and being more like UFO like, uh, nocturnal lights. Oceanic phosphorescent displays, which I've actually seen. I've actually seen that. I've seen um, bioluminescent plankton in the bathroom when I was at sea. And they said, turn the light off and uh, pull a flush mat. So I did it. And everything just went and it's, uh, it's trippy. Optical and radio anomalies in the atmosphere. Colour flashes and rising and settling astronomical bodies. Curious sunset phenomena. Unusual halos and mock suns. Mm. That's interesting. Rare rainbows and allied spectral phenomena. Glories, broken spectras and associated phenomena. Fata Maganas and other mirages. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Radio and radar anomalies. So that's going to be really interesting from a perspective. Unusual weather phenomena. To move on, mysterious natural sounds, extraordinary detonations, hums and hisses, bells, musical notes, and melodies coming out of the ether. Mm. Strange phenomena and earthquakes, phenomena accompanying earthquakes, sounds like cannon going off, earthquakes and possible triggering forces, miscellaneous earth tremors and vibrations, and geographical. So this is interesting. It's shit falling from the sky. I got a book about stuff like this in the room, but fish, frogs, and other living creatures from the waters above, probably fell through the windows. Right, hey, angel hair, 
Angel hair, guys. Yeah, I know. We discovered angel hair. And other organic substances. So, have you seen that? Is that a flossy stuff you get on? Hey, is it? Glutinous masses. Or pedri sur. Ice chunks and hydrometeors. Dust, thunderstones, and sundry inorganic matter falling from the sky. And the last chapter is dealing with magnetic disturbances. So, it's going to be a good book. Can't read it all. That's, that's just for you to oogle and go through. It's quite good, isn't it? Anyway, oh, there it is. I'd already loaded up. Ball lightning is an interest of mine. Or oh, all of it is an interest of mine, actually. Cooper Cam. In my last post, somebody said in my comments, Matt, you know that book you were reading about Cooper Cam being in this Istito land? It's like, yeah. It's like, states that he was on the telephone. So I don't think Kubla Khan from like this fire time off would be on the telephone. Well, maybe not, but we shouldn't be riding a brass horse at that period either. Whatever brass horse is. So we'll just go with it. I don't know. So yeah, there's a poem got linked to me by this Samuel Coolridge and it's associated with Kubla Khan and a vision of a dream. And it shows you maps of Xanadu. Which I got a massive collection of uh, Tatarian maps. I got a huge Tatarian collection. Pinpoint it. They reckon it's somewhere near Beijing. Okay, so he decreed pleasant dome erect. Okay, and he did it, and it was like paradise inside rivers, huh? crops, beautiful, best thing of going. Okay, like El Dorado. Did he build it? Are we in it? Are we in the pleasure? Well, it's not the pleasure dome. Be corrupted by stinking ass Phoenicians, but you know what I mean. Anyway. Duh. And Lord Byron, I was in a pub not too long ago. I went past the pub, I don't know if I went in there. Where Lord Byron did shit, apparently. So makes a famous Lord Byron. We'll just have a pub, we'll say Lord Byron hung out with you. And it gets everyone to come in. Clever. Make, make believe people. I'm not saying Lord Byron's make believe, right? Just saying. So, Kubla Khan. Pleasure Dumb Erect. In the poem by uh, Samuel Coolridge, completed in 1797 and published in. 1816 isn't that an interesting date okay the poem was comprised of one night after the experience of opium influenced into new instant dream after reading the works describing Xanadu in Xanadu Olivia New John was not wrong okay Shang Shangdu also known as Z Xanadu um, also, Yellow did a song about Xanadu as well. Any other Xanadu references, please comment. <laughs> um, so they reckon it's near present day Beijing. Okay, whatever. And they say he's a Mongol, but they don't say anything about Tataria. But I got a book I showed you yesterday saying he was the Shah of Tatari. So I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, 1816, interesting, interesting, but I want to show you the book. Okay, there is some interesting things in this actually. There's about the writer who's a Freemason because his hand fucking lodged in his jacket. I don't suppose he's got government issue jacket. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And it's you know it goes into like Marco Polo. He's, he's like mapped it. Okay, but like you can't you can't manage to see the Great Wall of China. And it's supposed to be all this time ago. Yeah, Cooper Khan's on a telephone in Reykjavik, apparently. So it's not a bit confusing. Whatever. So he's a Venetian explorer. So he's a Phoenician, which we know, anyway. And he reports on. And there's the original text. By Coolidge himself, 1816. Highly interesting date. So let's have a look at this bookage, shall we? And any clueage to Xanadu. So I'm on a Xanadu moment at the moment, because it's Xanadu. So there it is. In Xanadu. Don't do that live on the internet, man. Don't fucking just make videos. Whatever. Don't care. Fuck, care not. Yeah, 1816. The pains of sleep. I thought you had any pains you smacked off your ass, you fucking liar. So. <sighs> So, Kubla Khan. So, who's this? That's Lord Byron. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Lee Hunt, Second Generation Romantic Puppet. T.S. Eliot. Okay. So, my phone's going off. Where are you, man? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you doing things? So, yeah, in Kubra Khan, the pleasure to decree erect. Is it here? Did they do it? Are we living in it? Is the idea? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure, sure about Marco Polo, though, guys. I've got to be honest. Can't read him. He said he's Mongol, but he's a Tatarian. Uh, see, Mongol. There he is. Nice little snapshot of him, selfie. Going on 1294. Oh, 1294, eh? He's on telephone. So this got linked to me. This is a sterling book, this is, guys. This is a wicked book. This is. I got um, some Joseph P. Farrell in my book collection. Babylon Banksters, and they say about them using physics, high finance, ancient religion, and black magic on your ass. With the money and the fiat system, all of it. It's just like, I'm not going to go into all of it, I'm just going to summarise and you can have a look for yourself because the alchemy and deep physics of high finance and ancient religion, guys. This is just fucked up. And we know you already know about it, but somebody else is writing about it, okay? So, yeah, they say that they're using, basically, what would have been Tatarian magic or Tatarian alchemy. So, unless they concern the relationship between ether, physics, sweet, economics, astrology, alchemy, uh, geomancy, ancient temples, and the politics of suppression. Okay, it's not politics of suppression. And it's basically all about the Phoenicians banking system and basically the takeover of the Phoenician you know, state <laughs> it's a Phoenician state all right alas alas the great city of Babylon the mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her and no man buyeth their merchandise any more well yeah shall shit anyway isn't it Italian stuff's built to last. You've seen that. You've seen the price of Chippendale goes for? It's none of this murky Phoenician shit. <laughs> oh, the merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, I'm finding in out. Purple. They love their purple. And silk, and scarlet, and thine wood. Fine. Fine wood. And all manner of vessels of ivory and manners of vessels of precious wood and brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odours and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil this is getting more Phoenician by the second by the way and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses so sheep and horses are not beasts what are they then? and the chariots and the <laughs> and slaves and souls of men oh this is highly fucking Fact. I'm not going to read any more of that because of that. Just, sorry, guys, I'm not. But it's in Revelation of St. John. Happy days there, then. <laughs> anyway, so more of that bossy stuff going on, I see. So I'm supposed to shoot off. Hit. Do that, hurry. Oh, Richard Hoagland. Is that Mr. Hoagland? Yeah, Richard C. Hoagland. Isn't that interesting? He was um, science advisor for. What the Cronkite and the moon bullshit thing going on? Moon bullshit thing going on. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting read for you guys. I can't go into it all, obviously, but doomsday scenarios, alchemy, how the bankers use black magic over our asses. I'd love to be able to read some of it, though. Sterling stuff. And the language, the Phoenician languages, the mathematics, neuro linguistic programming, and a whole number of things to mind control poor unsuspecting masses and even if they did know they wouldn't fucking care a lot wouldn't really care okay. if the shit fits where it's scenario I think it's called a Stockholm Syndrome this is a mind blast this video is amazing so I time stamped it somebody passed it to me it's concerning the Stigo fire event and this is hard evidence for um Particle weapons. Oh, let me just check my volume on that. Um, yes, we're good. Okay, but 
it, last time I played I got a bit echoey so if it does it again I do apologise, don't know why there's only one on. Anyway, this is the Bishtigo event, this lady talks about people just spontaneously combusting, but it goes on about some mind blowing stuff guys, honestly it's like a nightmare scenario, which they say. So I'll play it from about by here in a sec, I will link it up so you watch it yourself so hopefully I don't get copyrighted, I'm going to play a tiny bit. Okay, 23. Um, let's listen from here, guys. 23, 3, oh, excuse me. I lost it. 23. Okay. As you can see, I can't sign into my uh, YouTube. I have to go in a guest browser. Stupid. Anyway. And then we're in nothing but ashes. People couldn't even find their relatives. There was just ashes left. And if a wind came up, you couldn't even find the ashes. Now, Father Perrin went to the river. He had, his rectory was very close to it, and he went to the river and was standing on the side of the river and saw see, all these people, none of them were plunging in the water. They all thought that this was the end of the world. They were praying. But when the priest jumped in, they, they followed. And so they were in the river, which sounds really good, but this was October. That river was really cold. And many people started um, having hypothermia. And they had to keep dunking their heads in because the fire would come burning all along. Some people lost their lives because the cattle jumped in the river too and they were swimming along and they knocked the people and drowned them. There's one story about a woman that grabbed the horns of a cow swimming by and he brought her to safety. They stayed in there for... Sorry to have to stop it there but I'm not sure what it sounds like. It might be echo when doing your head in. Plus, um, I linked the video, it's quite remarkable actually, the whole thing was like having me transfixed this morning, knowing about, you know, Prestige event anyway, but spontaneous combustion, you know, people just exploding, is nothing synonymous with any sort of forest fire guys, at all, it's just not, so, let's just, just rush to other, uh, play there. The next day it rained, and the next day it rained, not enough rain, to replenish everything, but enough rain to stop to stop the fires. Um, it is. I have one thing here I want to read because it was so it was so sad. Oh, and on another part that my grandfather told me about is he said they they had balls of dark blue gases that would skim along the tops of the trees and it would hit a tree and explode and fingers would go out in different areas and burn the things around them. And upon what I, when I was looking up or doing research, apparently if... Oh, I could listen to that for hours, guys, but <laughs> I really got to get on. But I'll link it, it's a mind blow. Yeah, that Pastigo, man, that was just same as California is now only on a larger scale they don't even know how many people arrived because they've saved us two shipments so this is a treat for you all I'm going to link up Pierre van der Haar but an entire collection of his stuff we're looking at Constantinople we're looking at Brazil America Rome Asia India loads of Rome and I, I show you the sort of thing that's, uh, that it's got on it Pierre van der Haar died at 17, 1733 in obscurity, he was one of the best artists ever. I think he's using some sort of technology of photographic technology. Well, whatever is this? Space Age Tower. Um, and he's got a knife for detail, but there's something else going on. I think it's a photograph. I've got a silkscreen pro process. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. Super futuristic, man. It looks like something out of a. Uh, futuristic film <laughs> now that is what he depicts and he depicts like sort of depravity as well because that's what's going on across the plane at this period apparently mud flood 
Oh, we got that. A Roman theater. Ooh, star footage. And some antiquity. Let's have a little look. So you can just pick up your nature and scroll through some juiceness. Venice. Okay. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, I love discovery. And the Phoenicians unveiling the bullshit of their bullshit. Which is bullshit. And, um. <laughs> Let's have a little look at Constantinople, maybe. Because it's a very long word. Constantinople is a very long word. Okay. Any pictures? Any pictures? Oh, there you are. I did enjoy Constantinople. Or Istanbul. So anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to pass them to you. I need to get on. This is be only an hour long vlog. So you're all them guys. Juicing, juicing. Make videos. Do stuff. If you like, I'll help. <laughs> Just tell me, I'll link it. And hopefully, YouTube is sending me messages daily. Am I getting my other ship back? Yeah, you never know. Might be something to uh, salvage if you You don't, you know. In pictures? Don't read that. Well, there's one now. Oh, very nice. Roman stuff going on, or Phoenician stuff going on. So, yeah, there's my book. I do apologize, guys, about this, but. She didn't want to tell me <laughs> at first, but yeah, that's like shit news. That. That's like really bad, and you know, it's just they just really don't want this book out there. But it's going to happen. It's just got to be a little bit longer, um, a bit like my channel. Same sort of thing going on, and just work harder. It just takes longer, and it's more work. It's all. So that's what's going on there. It's always uphill. It's never easy. And there's my uh, website. Okay, it's a shit up website, guys. Uh, it takes you direct to a lot of stuff, a lot of books, a lot of information, all on this subject. If you don't know about it, you pretty much find out from all people to learn from and the information from the Great Flat Earth British Think Tank. Got a shop announcements, resources, and the Great Flat Earth British Think photo dump, which is not literally biblical. Um, FEBS Incognito, who is the Flat Earth British. Lee. Who's Lee? Who's the incognito? He's gone. He's gone flat with British undercover. Is what he's done. Okay. As um. What a great flat with British think tank. No, that's not a great flat with British think tank. Anyway, there's my photos which you've already, which I've already shown. So let's have a look. So they're all dead. You can't get through to my channel from there. But it's comments, Tataria, Technasmia, Giants, Antiquitech. My words resources okay and there's my son's channel if you want to click that and sub to him he got 100 subs last week he was very happy about it with his alchemical stuff and that's me I'll come back now I'm going to be back I'll upload this later tonight because i got to go now and um, I'll come and hang out with you guys and uh, have a little bit of a blast so there's Technasmia nice somatic windows So yeah, thanks and gratitudes guys, anybody's been helping out, there's been so many of you in the background, been helping out, sending me my my info, or our info I should say, sending us, uh, sending me hard drive on the way, oh look at that, that was the original, f when they got rid of it there, wow, so sweet. And they just got a ship block stand the clock in here now when they had that. Astrological clocks. I think they all were over to Tari. Why, why, you know, it poses the question of why they would get rid of it. Yeah? Unless it's a different top. Completely, this is the same. This is the same. Okay. Oh, it is the same elevation. It's just something's different here. Yeah, no, it isn't. It's just, yeah, there it is. It's the same. It's the same. I get it. Okay, Phoenician whale and Cherubinuski. Organs, good for your organs, and Technasmia ceilings, which we've prostrated, could be made by reflections using sound in water reflected on the ceiling. Yeah? Beautiful. 
them like giant speakers. Imagine that full kicking. Yeah. Let's put a bass line. You walk down the street. That's just me. Okay. So oh, technize me up. Mind blowing interest in science. And very, very real. Light sound vibration. So that's me. Medfred. And some crappy news. Just to balance it up. So yeah, what you reckon on that guys? Fucking lose your horse. We can be massive what well, Greco Romano column on the back of your pony. You're taking you off to build a giant civilization, it's just down the road. Buying that. There you go, it's my phone. Universal thank you and gratitude is what I'm doing. So thank you for all everything. And um please subscribe. Spread the word. Get five of British peeps back together. Anyway. <laughs> be good.